Hello everyone, I'm Jake with Backwater. Today I'm going to show you how to properly adjust the Backwater surface tracer cavitation plate to run properly on your boat. Uh, just a little note before we begin, all of our motors are shipped out with the shims that you need to do this along with a few longer bolts in the event that you need to use the shims you'll need longer bolts to hold the cavitation plate on. Uh, so before I get started I'm going to take and rotate the prop into the bolt. I'm going to just pause here for a second. Uh, all the backwater motors have some sort of maximum tilt adjustment. Uh, what the tilt adjustment does is it controls how deep your propeller drops into the water when you're at no load or idling around. So when the engine's shut off or when you're just idling around. Because the cavitation plate is only going to bring your prop up to the surface when you have speed going forward. So what's important to do is have either on your light models the pin adjustment or on the full frames the stopper ball, the red stopper ball, set so your prop drops about 8 to 12 inches underneath the water so as your boat comes up on plane that's not what is popping your prop out of the water. So uh, what you want that cavitation plate to do is bring your propeller up to the surface of the water when you're up and running. When you're running up on the surface you gain four things. You gain speed because you have a more straightforward push with the propeller. You gain ease of handling because the prop is right there at the surface and you can turn easily. You naturally hit less things because your prop is running that much shallower. And lastly, when you do hit something, with the prop running right there on the surface, it's gonna release easily, which puts less wear and tear on your machine and then set right back in. First thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just actually take off this cavitation plate. So, if your cavitation plate and prop are diving down deep in the water, which means the angle of your plate is too steep, what you want to do is take the thicker part of the shim and place it in the direction that the thicker part is towards the motor. When you do this, you're going to want to use the more forward set of holes. And the reason for that is, is when I install the cavitation plate, I'm still going to have a nice tight seal on the gasket to the drive tube, which keeps the cavitation plate weedless. So if I was having a problem with my plate running too deep in the water, first I would take off, I would take off the plate, put in one shim as I did here, reinstall my bolts, tighten it down, and give it a test drive and see if one shim is enough. One shim might be enough, you might need two shims. Uh, and it, uh, it can be so particular that you actually take and break a shim, like so, and just install, let's say, a shim and a half. That's how particular you can get and how sweet you can get your backwater surface tracer cavitation plate to run. Now, vice versa. If you're running your motor and it's continually popping out of the water, as your motor runs forward, it's actually going to be bringing the cavitation plate and popping it out of the water completely. So in this case, what you do is you take the thicker part of the shim and place that towards the propeller side. When you do that, you use the rear set of holes because this is where your cavitation plate gasket makes a tight seal on your drive tube. Once again, at this point, I would put my bolts in, take it for a drive, and see what's happening to see if, uh, if one shim is enough. Sometimes one shim is too much and you might break the shim and only put in a half shim versus using a whole shim. Because the idea is, is you want the cavitation plate running right on the surface when you're done with this. Uh, so what we do when we build these our motors is we try to match our frames to work on the most common boats. So. This boat is a true flat bottom with a 16 inch transom, so this 23 horsepower in the SS frame 
doesn't require any shimming whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just reinstall this cavitation plate and then we're going to take this bolt for a spin. Put the cavitation plate back on the brace, slide it down, and what you're going to see is that rear set of holes. I'm going to take a little bit of blue Loctite, put it on the threads, put a little bit on each bolt. Now if you're out shimming, you don't necessarily need to bring the, the Loctite with you, but then when you do get home and you have your uh, have it all shimmed up properly, do go ahead then, put the blue Loctite on, and torque them to 75 inch pounds. That's blue Loctite and 75 inch pounds. So when I have all these bolts started, what I'm gonna do is slide the cavitation plate down and make sure I have a nice tight seal in between the cavitation plate gasket and drive tube itself. When I have that, I can go ahead and tighten up these bolts. All right, so now I have the cavitation plate reinstalled. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spin this motor out and we'll be ready for a drive. What you gain by having your cavitation plate set right on the surface and having the surface tracer uh, cavitation plate technology is you gain speed because that cavitation plate's right there on the surface. You gain ease of handling because your prop's right there at the top of the water. You naturally hit less things because you're running that much shallower. And lastly, when you do hit something, the prop releases out of the water easy and it sets right back in, which reduces wear and tear in a unit. From everyone here at the Backwater team, we'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Remember, be safe, be courteous, and enjoy your backwater long tail. Thank you. Thank you.